Great. So um, welcome, everyone, to the third episode of uh, our Future of Work, our Future of Work webinar series. Uh, today, we're looking at probably one of the most exciting products. Um, it's Microsoft Teams. Um, it's, it's exciting because it's new. I mean, we've, you know, Eric, over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at things that kind of have existed. Uh, we, we looked at firstly Office 365 and just a, a general overview. We looked at, you know, advanced email security, which has kind of been around for some time. And last week we looked at SharePoint and OneDrive, which obviously is, was on prem originally. So that's great. But today we're looking at something a lot newer. Um, it is really part of this move towards the way we work and it's called Microsoft Teams and maybe uh, to explain, I mean, you, we're obviously going to go into it today, but it, it's it's a hub. It's a place where bringing in all the different technologies. When we're talking about the way that we set up our meetings and do video conferencing, obviously we're using Teams today. When we're talking about having a conversation around documents, when we're talking about co-authoring and working on documents, it's a place that brings in Planner and Delve and a million other different systems. So I think the key concept that I want you all to think about is this idea of taking the conversation outside of email which has become just a terrible place to keep track of a topic and moving it into a place that enables collaboration, enables anybody to just jump in and comment, it enables anyone to have a conversation, enables um, anyone to, and, and most importantly, enables business to track and manage all this information that gets shared. Um, so I think I'm gonna put over to you, uh, Eric, and uh, you can take us through it. And oh wait, one last thing, just remember, any questions that you have, feel free to ask them in the chat. I will uh, definitely keep an eye on that and I'll raise those with Eric um, and uh, over to you. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Yeah. So to reiterate, if there are any questions, happy to cover them um, during the session. So please just put them in the message box um, in the comment section. Um, Daniel will moderate them and will let me know so that I can cover them while we're going through it. Cool, so, so let me just bring up uh, the couple of slides that we're gonna go through just before we, um, we get started with um, a deep dive into Teams itself. Okay, so, so Microsoft Teams, um, and I wanted to bring up this uh, this slide again. We had mentioned it um, right at the in our first session about uh, when was it about two months ago now. Um, and our first session really focused on what Office 365 is. And I think a big part of what Office 365 is really comes down to communication. But communication um, is really the start of all things. And when, when we talk about Teams today, you'll hear a lot of times I'll, I'll really talk about how um, the things that we need to do in business, everything that we need to do, the work that we actually need to do when, we're, when, we, when we go to work, that work needs to happen in context of the conversations that we have. So there's never before been a solution which has really brought our documents in context with the conversations that we have. Um, the tasks that we need to perform in context with the conversation that that with the conversations that we have, and that's been problematic. Um, we've gotten used to working in this disconnected state where email happens on this side of things, and then after the communication happens there, we then go and do files somewhere else. Okay. Similarly, we might be in a meeting, so we have conversations that happen within the meeting. And we've got. And then we take notes somewhere else and then we go and do the tasks or the out objectives that come out of that meeting somewhere else as well. So we've actually, in terms of our um, work environment, we've got a disconnect between the conversations and the communication that happens and the um, objectives that actually come out of those, uh, of those communication um, methods. And so, Really the objective um, behind Teams is really to bring context back into um, our environment so that we can work, uh, so we can have these conversations, but out of those conversations, 
we can immediately in context create a file. We can create a task out of that. Um, and that makes it really, really easy going forward for us to find out, you know, when I created this document, what kind of conversation did we have? Oh yes, it was linked to this meeting or it was linked to this conversation that we had with the team um, or it was linked to this task. So bringing all of those things together, I think can create a really, really powerful um, story around the future of work. And that's, I think, what, what makes teams really exciting, uh, really exciting. Um, and it's what I think is really driving the team's adoption across the globe. Um, if I speak to some statistics that Microsoft releases every quarter, um, obviously they release their, their uh, financial reports. But in addition to that, they release some um, interesting t statistics in terms of how their services, which ones are growing, which ones are not, those kinds of things. And what's always interesting is that Teams is the most is the fastest growing solution in Microsoft's history ever. So much faster than the dominance that Windows took when Windows was first released. Uh, much faster than the dominance of Microsoft Office in the workplace. Microsoft Teams from the get-go has had the fastest adoption rate of any Microsoft solution or technology ever in Microsoft's history. And I think that's testament to what Microsoft is doing in Teams in terms of making sure that the solution works as it should. And it's also a testament and it shows us the kind of need that's out there. You know, people want a solution that is able to give them uh, what I was talking about just a little while earlier in terms of the context around all of the, the, the mediums that we work with and the objectives that we need to perform in our role. Okay, so Teams really fits within the chat and conferencing space as well as the social networking space inside Office 365. And primarily it's about direct communication. So how can we facilitate the communication between both internally between us as colleagues and, and employees of the business, as well as communication externally with um, our suppliers, our partners, our customers. How can we make sure that that communication is also done in context? So we'll talk a little bit about how you can include groups, how Microsoft facilitates that, and how you can even be part of other organizations inside Teams so that you could be a part of a team in um, a different organization and be part of the teams within your own organization and how Microsoft actually splits those environments because they do need to be split in some way so that you can make sure that from a security and compliance perspective, there's no, um, uh, there's no direct, let's say, uh, or there's no risk of some certain, of certain conversations happening where they shouldn't. Okay, so we'll talk about that in terms of the security and compliance and how you can actually include guests um, in these teams later on as well. Okay, so Teams is all about being able to communicate in the moment and keep everyone in the know. It helps you to stay connected with chat calls, meetings within your team, and in private or small group conversations, which we're gonna look at. Uh, we can schedule meetings, Similarly to how we've been doing that in Skype for Business, for those of you who have used Skype for Business before, Teams gives all those Skype for Business meeting capabilities with a couple of advanced uh, features that uh, Skype for Business didn't have, which I'll mention as well. We can also bring in context the files, apps, um, and, and other like tasks and other apps that we use all in context of these conversations within Microsoft Teams. And that's really what I want to demo and showcase throughout this webinar today. Now, what I do want to do before we get into the app itself, is I'm going to bring up this, um, this slide again. And this slide really is about the communication and what to use when. So what service within Office 365 really fits depending on the type of communication that I really want to do? And so over here on the, on the, um, on the left, on the Y axis, we've got the priority and time sensitivity. So urgent communication can now all be done using Teams. You can see Teams now fulfills all of the requirements here at the top. So call or, or an instant message, 
to an individual, great. Teams is brilliant in doing that. Group, team, or department communication, well, teams can do that in terms of the online meetings. And it fulfills um, the urgent high requirement in terms of the priority or time sensitivity. And then if our communication or our audience size, internal or external, um, grows, let's say, organization-wide, we want to bring in a whole lot of people into a broadcast, we can do that. And in doing so, we can actually include up to 10,000 people in a live broadcast and even more um, on demand afterwards. So it's really, in terms of scalability of uh, the Microsoft Teams platform, um, you can see how it really, really takes on a lot of different services inside Office 365. Now, what I do want to talk about before we get started is some gen um, generational preferences at work. There's obviously, as we know, um, and in terms of what the statistics that Microsoft has done tells us, that depending on how we grew up, obviously there's a certain uh, preference to how we like to work. And that's only normal, right? We, as human beings, we like to use what we're used to. Um, and we're, we're, all, we're all resistant to, to change. Some of us more so than others, but that's just how it is. You know, we, we like to work in the way that we always have. Um, but I think it's always at the top of Microsoft's mind and obviously at the top of our mind as well. How are organizations going to work in future? So this comes back to really what, the, what our entire webinar series is all about, the future of work. And if we really focus in on Generation Z here on the right hand side, we've got to think about how Generation Z, in terms of these two categories at the bottom, really perform their best when they've got the ability to do persistent chat and they have conversational user interfaces. So things like social media driven um, style interfaces can really bring out the best and the most successful work for that next generation. We also have things like um, team workspaces, it really works well across the board. So that's something we really wanna focus on. And I think all of you that are on the call today will agree that when we go through Teams, you'll see that the, the workspace that really Microsoft Teams creates really gives um, or elevates the ability for everybody to work, no matter whether they're baby boomers all the way to Generation Z. All of us can benefit in terms of working in these um, in these single workspaces and having everything in context. Yeah, I mean, if I can just jump in here, um, sure. Eric, it's very interesting because um, I'm looking at this in-person visual video meetings, team workspaces, again, mm -hmm. on Generation Z. And I'm thinking, yeah. you know, something that we all use all the time and we can see it in our day to day. And often people mix, I will think of teams a little bit is WhatsApp. WhatsApp is exactly that. Let's start at the bottom, um, conversational user interfaces. That's what emojis yeah. are. You know, that you can yeah. just easily and quickly display how you feel with a thumbs up or a smiley face or love in the eyes. Persistent chat, right. always available, always on. Uh, team workspaces, we have groups. Everyone has groups at the moment. So we, that we, we've got that kind of feature on WhatsApp. And then the video calling, which I use all the time, especially when I'm away from my girlfriend in Johannesburg, and we use video calling. So in a way, Microsoft yeah. Teams can be seen as a WhatsApp. But I'd like to just say a WhatsApp for business that's designed mm -hmm. with the security and the uh, the security and awareness and 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 managing the risks. Um, but it's it might have all that, but it's also accessible on any device, on a Mac, on a PC, on a mobile device. We use it a lot at Solid on our mobile devices, um, and it's, it's almost like WhatsApp on steroids in in a sense. So and and it's so interesting uh -huh. watching this watching the slide. It really is whatever has made WhatsApp a success are all the things on the right hand side, and those are available in Teams. So yeah, tell us more. Hundred percent. So I mean that that's really where Microsoft is focused. They've realised that you know there's certain technologies out there that just work really really well. They've become so um, just pervasive across all aspects of our lives, both in our personal lives and in business, like WhatsApp, that you'll notice as I go through Teams today that there are a lot of similarities. Um, and that's not because Microsoft is really copying WhatsApp. It's just because 
from a technology standpoint, this is really what people are, ask, are, are looking for. And that's what the statistics are telling us. So a lot of those features, you know, Microsoft's really driving, hard, driving home because it's what people need, it's what people want. Um, but when it comes to business, working with those tools in business, working with WhatsApp in business can be quite difficult because I'll speak to some of the challenges that um, can occur when you work with a solution like WhatsApp in business and how Microsoft has really taken that, maybe just um, improved upon some of those um, those things to make Teams really a WhatsApp on steroids, as you said, Daniel. So I think that's a good way to put it. Okay, so let's let's dive in and have a look at Microsoft Teams. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just as a reminder from like the first session, if you want to get into the Office 365 online portal, it's as simple as going to office.com and then you have access to all of your apps. Now I'm going to access Teams through this online portal um, just by virtue of the fact that I want to leave this call running that we're doing recording obviously with the Teams meeting, but I want to demo all the all the capabilities um, within the within the environment. Um, whereas if I'm on the call, we're gonna we're gonna lose a couple of things. So what I want to do is I've opened up a pre-opened Teams here in this tab, and I think importantly to note. Um, for those of you who've who've used or have seen Teams before, you'll notice that even when I load it in my browser, the user interface is, is the same. Um, and that was something that Microsoft and their engineering team and the development team really focused quite uh, importantly on to make sure that the user interface, whether it was in the web, whether it was on desktop, on tablet or on phone, was as seamless as a switch over as possible so that there was no learning curve that uh, we all needed to go through if we switched platforms. It should be completely familiar to us whether we learn about it through a web interface like this where we've got the capabilities in Teams or whether we use the desktop app. Okay, now um, most likely you'll probably want to run the desktop app just for the reason that if an application is running directly off your laptop, there's less reliance on internet connectivity. So um, if your internet connectivity is not so good, well, you've still got most of the elements within Teams running off your laptop, so the speed will be good. Um, you also have the capabilities that some web browsers don't, don't necessarily enable. Things like the ability to do voice and video inside the browser. Some browsers don't enable that just yet. So. If you want to have the full voice and video um, and recording and desktop sharing experience that we're doing here on Teams in this webinar series, you've got to run the desktop app because that enables um, that full the full feature set. And the same thing could be said of uh, you know running Word or Excel or even um, PowerPoint within your browser. Yes, you can go and edit Word documents, work on them, create them, etc. But the fully featured experience of the desktop app of Word um, gives you the full set of features that you might want. And so likewise, same thing applies with Teams. Now, a couple of things you'll notice when I initially launch Teams is I'm immediately um, presented with the teams that I'm a part of within the organization. I'm also at the top bar, always shown the search um, interface. This is to make it as easy as possible for all of us to be able to find anything. We can find a person we want to speak to, find a document we want to work on, and we can find specific features um, or teams that we really want to get to within, uh, within the application. So the search is always top and center, easy for you to find. In addition wait to a, that, it also- Wait, a, wait a second, wait a second. Are you saying I can find documents that are stored in yeah. SharePoint or within Teams? Correct. Oh, wow. All centrally, it's a global search. Okay. Okay. But well, thanks. Yeah, great question. So, um, and Microsoft's trying to integrate this into the other apps. Um, if any of you are on the insider versions um, of the Microsoft Office applications, the so Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you may notice that what uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook are starting to get. Um, is the same search bar. 
It's the Microsoft search. You're searching across all of Office 365 instead of searching just in the app. And I think that's going to be a powerful thing once Microsoft releases that, which only exists in Teams at this moment, will exist across all the other apps. So regardless of whether we're in Outlook at that point in time or Word at that point in time, we have a central point for search across all of Office 365. Okay, so that's a powerful thing that's coming um, later on. Um, we're also able to type in commands here. So things like the ability to set our status. So if we type forward slash, we can see uh, someone's activity. So maybe we've been out of the office and we usually work very closely with, let's say in this case, uh, I worked very closely with Daniel. So I could check what's the activity of Daniel as an example. Um, and that would allow me to very quickly get up to speed even though I was out, out of the office, I can very quickly and instantly see what's happened while I've been on leave. What conversations have been had within the teams or, um, you know, with Daniel, um, what documents have been created, etc. Instead of the traditional approach where I've got a few hundred emails to go through one by one, and uh, some of them were really critical, some of them not. Whereas here, I can use these commands to my benefit. I've also got things like um, setting my status to um, be right back. So, you know, just while you're, while you're away from your, your desk, just set it as be right back. Everyone else in your organization knows um, that you'll, you'll be back shortly. Um, we can go to files to see our most recent files, which will give us a list of the recent files that we worked on. It's a nice drop down list over here. Um, we can do things like use um, at mentions. So if we say at, we can immediately start an at mention or a conversation that is directed to a specific person quite easily. We can just use that to do that. And we can say at news to actually find what is the current, what is the current news? And we can customize what news we want to see here. So um, let's actually install that and I'll show you what that does. Okay, what so do you mean loading. install? What do you mean by install? Is are you installing it's another application or? It's a little extension for for Teams. Um, so like news over here gives me from a couple of different news sources a couple of things that are trending on the web. So I can get a little snapshot of kind of the news that's happening on the web, which might be interested, in, uh, which I might be interested in, and I can customize this by going um, to the news app which should be sitting down under my more apps and I can customize maybe what news articles I'm more interested in, whether it's tech, et cetera. Um, the same thing could apply for any other apps. So whether I wanna see uh, search for videos in YouTube, I've got everything consolidated here from within uh, Teams that I can do that. So if there's a YouTube video that I wanna share with the Teams, in Teams with my colleagues, I could do that. I could just search for the video here and then kind of share it with, with everyone else. Uh, at weather would give me my weather report, so I can install this add-in for, um, so here I'd need, to, I'd need to enter location, so I'm gonna search for Cape Town here. And there's the weather for Cape Town. Obviously I'd need to set my, uh, my region. And because it's running in the cloud here, I think my region is actually set. If I go to settings, I think it's actually set as US. So you're just gonna make sure that when you run the app, that you actually set this as English South Africa. There it is, English South Africa, which will then give you the correct um, formatting as well. So we'll see degrees Celsius, etc. And then when we click on it, we should be able to see more details here. We can copy this and then send it as a message or put it in the team, etc. So more details will then take us to the site itself and we can have all the details. I, I just want to expand a little bit on some of the apps that we use at Solid. Um, sure. One of the ones that we, you know, again, so you've got this ecosystem of apps. Remember, we've got these teams which we're going to dive into. But one of the ones is we like to run polls, especially in our culture channel. And so we sure. ask our staff, what would you like? Would you prefer this for lunch? Or would you prefer that for lunch? And we can actually uh, run a poll. We've got the little poll extension. And uh, from the search bar or from the chat, you can quickly poll the team and, and get your feedback. So it really is amazing. There's a whole ecosystem of apps designed for all types of businesses um, that you can add in. 
100 percent and i think praise goes along with that as well the ability to actually show gratitude to peers for like good work done being able to do that as part of the team i think creates a lot of value in terms of ensuring that people feel that they're yeah that they were that they showed good leadership or that they were a coach to somebody or that they were an achiever in the specific project um, so we can send these different types of praise to people and then the team will be able to see that. I think it's a great way to actually foster more effective teamwork even, along with those polls. Okay, so this top bar, always available and it gives you the search, as I've mentioned, and then additionally here on the left-hand side, the ability to easily start a chat. But usually, I mean, if I wanna start a chat, then I just use the at mention generally, and I just type in the person's name. It's far easier to do it that way. Or if I wanted to call somebody, I just go forward slash call. Um, or there's chat. Um, where is my forward slash should have the ability to call, which is strange. You use that before, but chat, and then I chat with somebody, and I could after chatting with them, I can elevate it to a call, but I'm not sure why call is not showing for me now. I do use it every so often. Anyway, um, then on the left hand side, it gives you the the four, sorry, the five most frequently used areas that I think help us to really, uh, it, this minim, minimalistic approach to getting to the things we need to work on also helps us to navigate um, through a lot of complexity that, um, that the work, that the amount of work that obviously all these different teams are doing generates a lot of different, but you don't want that to impact how people get to the right places. So these five things over here allow us to get very quickly to the areas that we need to see. And if I bring it back to Daniel's comment about WhatsApp, something that in terms of business, WhatsApp is really missing is the ability to see like an activity or an overview. So you so you, you have like an, um, an activity feed where you can see what are things that are relevant for me to look at while I've been away? A lot of us can pick up our phone after being in meetings for a couple of hours or for um, you know being out of, off, out of the office. And we pick up our phone and just after two hours, we can see like a list of, we, we see like this group has this many conversations. These things are, uh, these chats are waiting, are waiting for us. All of those things, um, they just waste our time because we've got to go through, what, through them one by one. And some of the group conversations don't necessarily apply to us. So this feed, this activity feed, helps to organize what's waiting for us while we've been away. And it will show things that are relevant to me. Things like if there's a message sent to me directly, an unread message that I haven't seen yet, of course, that's relevant for me to look at. If I've been at mentioned in a team, um, that's going to be something relevant, so it's important for me to look at. If it's a reply to a message that I send to the group, that's also something quite important to look at. Whether I'm following, whether I have any likes for the messages that I had, missed calls, voicemails, apps, so like polls or things like that, that have been sent out, um, or whether there's documents that are trending while I've been away. So maybe there was a document that was shared on our team, everyone else has looked at it, so it's trending because everyone else has looked at it, but I haven't yet. You know, that's quite a quite a nice reminder to have. So a trending document within the organization, also great ability. So these, um, we can all filter by these. So if I only want to see unread, I can see only unread. And this at least gives me a high level overview of what I need to focus on in terms of um, doing my work. Who, I, um, who Eric, I've missed communication, et cetera. Yes. Eric, I just wanted to let you know that um, on our side, and I think it's for everyone, uh, it's quite blurred. Um, I'm not sure if you have a network cable. I'm not sure if it's your internet connection, uh, if that's possible. If not, it's probably just the Wi-Fi in where you're at. But uh, I'm just letting you know that there let's, is uh, a blur. Let's have a look. Let's. I'm going to turn it off. Um, let me share it again. You can see maybe if that clears things up. Great, and if it doesn't uh, clear it up, what we'll do is we can just turn off your video. I think it's more important to get your, uh, yeah, it doesn't, see, doesn't seem like it's clearing up. Let's stop your video no, and see if that, in, that improves it. Cool, I'll turn Thank it off. You. Okay, it's off.
Okay, the, the next area underneath activity is the ability to do chats. And that's really um, exactly what it says. It's just the ability for you to chat. So I wanna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or an ad hoc group conversation outside of my team. So let's say I have a situation where there's content that my team needs to have access to and there's conversations that happen within my team. But there's always those scenarios where I need to speak with just one or two people on the side and just go like, hey guys, look, I'm trying to, trying to work on this thing before I publish it into the team or before I share it with the team. Um, can we just have a quick conversation about it? And then we go and add the, the people that we actually want to talk with. Um, and we can have a video, video call. We could elevate that to a video call or to an audio call. Um, and we can still do content sharing but it's like a, it's an ad hoc. We've we were just organizing that for the time being. It's not going to form part of the content that we're maybe uh, sharing within within the team because we'll put that content into the team once it's actually ready. Um, and often, if we think about this uh, realistically, often there's conversations that happen like this. We have uh, we have ad hoc. We have yeah conversations that just happen at the office which would be outside of, let's say, a more formal conversation that happens between the team. And that's really the best way that I can put it in terms of where chat is the best way to facilitate that. Um, now, all the history is stored here. So um, as I look at Teams, Teams, you'll see that all the conversations are stored, all the files that we share are stored, all the tasks are, are in context, etc. But the same thing applies to the chats. So if there was files that we shared within a particular chat, or a thread, uh, you know, in terms of the conversations that we had and other things that we could add. We could add, okay, well, between this conversation that this, this ongoing conversation just between myself and Megan, we also need maybe to share a OneNote where we're gonna take notes of this conversation that we just have between the two of us and we'll take those notes and then we'll publish the content into the team once it's ready to share. But we can add other capabilities to make sure that the conversation between the two of us remains in context of the other of the other things that we might generate out of those conversations, like we generate files out of the conversations that we have, or even um, yeah reports, etc. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a great idea of the chats. In the chats, it's always going to show me the recent chats to help me get back to ones that I've recently had, so I can continue those. It's going to su suggest people that I speak to quite often within the organization um, and outside the organization. And then my contacts are, uh, are people that I've maybe favorited. So as an example, I can add Alex and Enrico as favorite contacts, which then means they're gonna be under my favorites and just allows me to easily organize these um, exactly how I want them to be organized, okay. Then we, then we get into the teams. Now again, I'm gonna come back to, to similarity to WhatsApp. Now WhatsApp, we also have these groups that we're part of, and lots of people can be part of these groups, and those groups in many cases can be uh, quite busy, so quite chatty, if I put it that way. There's a lot of conversations that happen, and because of that, it's quite difficult to track and organize the conversations because the, the conversations just happen in this really long thread within the group. Now, Microsoft realized that that's a, that's a fundamental problem in terms of how we communicate within business as well. Everything again needs to be in context. And so wouldn't it be better that when we have conversations within our teams to ha have the ability of organizing these conversations based on the topic or to channel the conversations in a particular way? So Microsoft calls these channels, but you could refer to them as topics or uh, categories, anything like that. So as an example, in sales, we might have an open forum, a general area where our general conversations um, over here just, just happen normally. So any, any conversations that are of general nature, you can see there was a, uh, an, um, a Giphy shared over here, any conversations of a general nature can happen immediately in the general, it's just an open forum to talk about anything. But then as an example, the monthly reports, well, any conversations about the monthly reports can happen right here. So 
again, it makes it really easy for me as an employee and any of the other employees to come back. What was said about the monthly reports a week ago? Whereas if we had to do that in WhatsApp, we'd have to scroll past other conversations that happened around other topics to try and figure out where did the piece of the conversation happen where we were talking about this particular thing. Um, and so organizing not only our files, but our conversations around this kind of uh, method, I think really, really works well. Um, and people really, really like this. At least that's the feedback that I get, and it's the feedback that Microsoft gets. Now, the same thing, and I'm going to use, let's say we go to this um, this launch team. So this is a product, the X1050 uh, uh, launch team. Sorry, someone have a question? Got a bit of an echo there. Um, so in the launch team, if we have the general tab, and then we have all these other tabs. Now, some of the tabs you can see are bold, um, or not the tabs, sorry, some of the channels or uh, categories um, or topics are in bold. The reason they're in bold is because what it's telling me is while I've been away, a conversation has happened there that I might want to look at. It hasn't automatically shown it in my activity because my activity, my activity is just going to get cluttered. My activity is for things that I need to focus on, things where I was at mentioned, replied, or I had a di direct conversation to me. But conversations can continue with the team without me being directly involved. So I still want to be able to see when a conversation's happened while I've been away, and that's why it's designated as bold. And I can even see whether there's an important conversation that I've had that has happened while I've while I've been away. And hopefully that was at mentioned to the team. So I can see if I go into design um, that Isaiah, um, you know, there's a lot of conversations here. Um, Megan at mentioned Isaiah um, to say where to go on the mockups. OK, and then there was some then there was a couple of replies and um, Megan then shared the document. So now the document that is shared, the marketing collateral is in context of this conversation that we started around the design. So everybody in the launch team needs to all see this, but Megan specifically at mentioned me because it was important for me because um, this was directed at me specifically. Um, but still relevant to the team. And then Megan went and shared the document itself. Now, instead of uploading the document somewhere completely separate or placing the document in a file share, which now I have to go and navigate to and try and align up the conversation and the document, immediately it's here, it's linked. And where is this file stored? Well, immediately in the launch team design files tab. So here under design, you could see this design as like a subfolder for files as well. So we're categorizing conversations as well as categorizing files. And there's the marketing collateral timelines there that Megan uploaded automatically put within the design subfolder, essentially. If we go to the conversations and let's say we look at this again, that doesn't mean we can't open this directly in context of the conversation. So I can click on it. It will open directly within Teams, and then I can choose to edit it within Teams, because maybe it's convenient to do that, to, to do so, because I don't have to change to a different application. Or if I want the fully featured, um, uh, let's say, app, I want to edit this in the, uh, in the fully featured Word app on my desktop, I can choose to edit it in Word there as well. And if I choose to do that, it's going to ask me, do I want to open Word? I'm going to say yes. This is then going to open Word, and this file that Word then opens is directly connected back to Teams. So, and sorry, I'm going to have to log in here because I hadn't logged in before. And any changes that I make to this document will be stored back into Teams and vice versa. If somebody starts working on this document, let's say at the same time as me, I'm going to be notified of that. So the co-authoring that we spoke about last time, all of those features are available regardless of whether I want to use the fully featured um, desktop app Word, which is just busy signing in at the moment. Um, the very first time you do it, it might take a little bit of time just to just because I've had to sign in. But any subsequent opening of the document of it, or any documents will be quite quick. So here now I've got that document and I can edit it as I like. 
So if I remove, let's say, this uh, initial section here, that's going to be saved back to Teams. And if I go back to Teams now in my browser, that document would have been recently modified by me. So if I open it again, we'll have that change, the change that I made by deleting that top section. Well, it's there, it's all synchronized. So again, that's that central idea that we had from last week about making sure that documents, they were all working on the same version of the documents and that we're not, we're not got these different document versions kind of floating around, some attached to emails, some stored on people's desktops, et cetera. This brings everything together in one place. Now, if I made an update, I could obviously go in context here. Um, so here's this conversation and I could just reply and then at mention everyone. So I at mention the channel. So in this case, I want to at mention, I could at mention the entire team, which is the X1050 launch team, which will notify the entire team of this document. Or maybe I want to direct the team directly to this channel. So the design. So I'm just going to say at design. Um, at design, that should work for me. Try again. There we go. At design. And then this will actually mention in, mention to everyone there's a new document. So I could say at design, I've, uh, I've just updated the uh, collateral timelines. And then when you send this out, this is going to be replied to everyone and everyone will get an activity. They'll, they'll get this in the activity. And when they click on it, it'll take them directly to the design tab. So that's great. It allows them to, it allows you um, as the person who, you know, started this communication to direct people to exactly where you want, to, where you want them to go. Um, I could obviously put um, the ability for the, I could, I could add the file in here as well if I wanted to take them directly there, a link to the file. Now something else underneath. Um, I've got you, um, something in Chinese. Now Teams also allows you to translate things live in um, in context. Now I think I need the desktop app to do this, so um, uh, I'm going to need to log in. But but essentially, if any message was sent in your let's say native language, whether you were Afrikaans or Zulu, those are the two two languages besides English that are supported for South Africa at the moment, more will be added, Microsoft has promised. But any, any of those languages, people could speak in their native tongue in, the, um, in Teams, and then they just click on these three dots. Anybody else who wants to see this will have a little translate button shown. Or if you don't see it, go to the three little dots and it'll say translate, and it'll translate it to whatever language you have set yeah, so if we have English South Africa, obviously that's going to then translate it to English South Africa. Okay, or we could choose Afrikaans South Africa, which will then translate this Chinese into Afrikaans for us. Okay, but yeah, I can't show that, sorry, just because we have the, um, the other app rope open. Okay, so, um, so we've spoken about the conversations and the files. Um, I'm just cognizant of time as well. But the last thing I want to mention in terms of teams here is really that you can bring conversations and files in context of each other, but you can bring other things in context as well. So maybe for the design, so specific elements related to design, we've also got the usage possibilities. So what might people use it? So I've pinned things like the usage possibilities so that people can easily go and view this document as a separate tab. So I'm going to navigate through the files. I've actually um, featured this, the usage usability priorities, because I want to make sure that the design team is aware of the usability testing priorities that we need to do in the design, right? So that's important. So I've featured this document. I've also got a wiki, which could be seen as like a um, an FAQ. There's frequently asked questions um, that, especially if I'm a new employee, and I get invited to this team 
as a new employee, I let's say, yeah, join this launch team because um, I'm a design specialist. Well, I might not know what people are, are working on or maybe how to go and access certain things. So this could be a great way to sort of act as a as a wiki site for onboarding. So I can have onboarding information like I'm able to find the design um, documents here under files. Um, I'll be able to see all the historical conversations so I can proactively be part of the conversations. I've got ability to see the usage priorities and the wiki will help me to navigate uh, myself. And I can do that proactively instead of um, the traditional approach to onboarding an employee where they would reactively sit and wait for work to be given to them. Here they can join the team, be proactive, be engaged in the conversations and start working from the get-go. And I think that really also as another um, thing that you can consider really helps to foster um, great team um, engagement and also um, allows us to get to this idea of the future of work and how we can actually work more effectively as a team from the get-go. We can then add other features like maybe the design team needs tasks. So um, we've got the launch team and there might be general tasks, but we also need design tasks as well. So we can add a plan over here saying we can just call this tasks. because that's what we want the tab to be called at the top. And now we've got tasks here, which we can move maybe over there. So we've got conversations, files, and tasks, and then the usage priorities. And here I can then just go and assign tasks to whoever I want. So I can say, um, update the uh, timelines as we had done before. And I'm gonna set the due date to tomorrow and I'll assign it to Adele. And we just say add task. So that Adele is aware that, that those, those are things she needs to do. And obviously the document, Maybe I want to automatically bring in the documents. So these timelines, I can just select it, uh, get a link to it, uh, copy it because that's what I want to do. And I've just bring it into the task. So I could add an attachment here, maybe a link, right? And add the link, or I could add it from SharePoint, which essentially is connected to Teams. So we have the design folder, general, et cetera, just like we have here in Teams. I wanna go and plug that design file, um, these timelines, and I say save. Well, now what happens is we've got the file that needs to be updated by Adele linked directly to the task. And all she needs to do is click on it and open the file directly. And she can add her comments. Um, she, I can add a checklist for her to do. And I can see the progress of all these tasks in the charts section. So how many uh, tasks I are left, et cetera. Yeah. I just want to jump in there. And, you know, I think at the beginning of this webinar series, you know, I said that wonderful things happen when you've got all your data in one place. And while there may be certain tools that can offer these types of functionalities, what's amazing is how they operate together. So I really want to just point mm -hmm. out in this particular example, that same task may exist on your mobile phone under your on your to-do app. It will exist in your Outlook under your to-dos. And when you update the Outlook to-do, it will automatically update the to-do here. So it doesn't matter the way, the part of the future of how we work is, and we've covered this already, is that we want to work, we want, we want each person to work what's best for them. And because you might be a younger and older person, you have different preferences, but those preferences speak together. And so that's amazing how everything talks together because it's the same platform. Absolutely. Great point. And I think it points back to how all companies has, have been successful at technology. If we think about what made Microsoft successful in the beginning, it was definitely Windows. And why was it Windows? Well, it was because Windows was integrated into the devices that people wanted to use. It was the only platform where people could actually bring everything together in one place. Okay. Secondly, we have things like we could talk about Apple. The reason why Apple have, has such a dominance in terms of the mobile space, um, obviously Android has kind of replicated that, but the reason Apple had such a dominance in the mobile space was really because of their integration with the apps that we wanted to use. So their app store fundamentally changed the game and made them really, really strong in terms of mobile, um, let alone their ability to create um, great devices. It was really the integration and being able to bring 
the apps that we use together onto that one device. And I think the same thing, same kind of idea or methodology is really applied here in terms of teams. Bring everything together in an integrated approach. That is what makes it not only the solution successful, but it makes us as individuals, as part of a team, successful in the way that we operate as well. Okay, so um, I think, I mean, there's a lot of other things that I could say about teams, but I know we've got about five minutes left. What I'd like to do instead of maybe rushing over the other ones, because I don't think that's going to be very effective. Um, I think I've given you some great insight in terms of really where teams plays very, very well with, within your organization. There's a lot of other things that I could that I could speak about, but I think let's let's stop there. And I'll say if there's conversations that need to happen around how do we best deploy teams in our environment? How can we make sure that we set up the team properly and that we set up the channels properly? You know, how do we divide these up so that they are effective going forward? We'd be happy to consult in terms of doing that. Um, and yeah, if there's any questions regarding the things that I've really spoken about today, please go ahead and ask. Um, you know, I'd be happy to to cover them in the next next three minutes that we do have. Great. So yeah, if anyone has any questions, you can either unmute your mic on the right hand side, or you can uh, chat it in the chat box below, um, and we'll give a couple of seconds uh, or a couple of thirty seconds or so for anyone that's got any questions. Okay, while we're waiting for questions, um, I think it's it's quite critical and I think it's quite important. I've seen so many cu customers that maybe get excited about the prospect of Teams and they just want to get started right away. Uh, just a word of, of caution because I know it is exciting in terms of a lot of the stuff that I've spoken about, um, but just make sure that in terms of how if you've got an existing SharePoint environment, you want to make sure that when you create the teams, that the teams are connected to that existing SharePoint environment. Because I've seen too many customers go and create teams that are completely separate or disconnected from the SharePoint environment that they may have. Or they've got groups that are sitting in Outlook the way these, these conversations are happening in Outlook. We want to can make sure that the team that you create that you're joining that existing one because it may well already um, already be available in Outlook. You've already got these groups in Outlook. Let's just connect the features of Teams to them instead of creating brand new ones. Um, yeah, and, so, we, and yeah. if I can just add to that, we've also seen in when you've got an on-prem environment and you've got Active Directory and you've got distribution groups, uh, and those are the groups, those are also a little bit more challenging to get right in Microsoft Teams. So they have to be recreated. So there definitely is some planning around that and Solid Systems is very much equipped to help you with that. So feel free to engage. Absolutely. Okay. Great, uh, there no Eric, questions I, from anyone? I don't see there are any questions. Anything from the Solid team? Uh, you know, this is a tool that we use every day. I must be honest, using the search at the top, you've shown me a couple of things. Uh, something I also wanted to add, maybe as a last comment, if there are no questions, was around around um, the presence. You know, another thing that's very valuable in this ecosystem mm -hmm. is understanding availability of people and, and you'll go if you look at the uh, chat uh, either the, if, if you go over to chat or wherever you are you will see if you're available or not available and what's really interesting about that at solid is you know especially with my colleagues that i work with uh, on a continuous basis is this idea of busy and how does the you, you know it's not that you have to go and set your your availability manually um it actually integrates directly within your within your outlook calendar so if a, if i've got an appointment that is uh, that is in my diary, it knows that I'm busy during that time. Um, but if I mark that appointment as free as it's just a reminder, it will show me as available. 
I'm away from my desk, it will automatically show that I'm away. So it's quite nice and easy just to see it as an icon, exactly who is available and who is not, or who is on leave. There we go, out of office, I'm vacation. I'm on, I am on currently on vacation, and that's because of your out of office that's set on your email, which sits in a different application. So this thing of presence is really, you know, uh, we talked about persistent communication is something that Generation Z is all after. Mm. Well, yeah. you need to be to be persistent. You have to be present, and if you're not present, well, let me know in an easy to understand way. So uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much, Eric, for your time. We look forward to the next uh, webinar, which is all about uh, Microsoft Planner, which we touched on slightly today. That will be happening. I think next week's um, actually Flow, sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry apologies. I, I see it flow, yeah. as is Microsoft Flow and, and Microsoft Flow. Why don't you give us a, a little quick intro on what we can uh, look forward to next week? Absolutely. Yeah, so flow, um, and I think what I really want to do in two weeks' time on the 13th of June is we'll look at how um, flow helps to control the flow of information from teams or from planner, etc. And flow is all about um, automating the mundane or the uh, tasks that that let's say take a long, long time to do. So an example would be. You know, I've got email attachments that I need to try and file in the right place. Flow, as a simplistic example for me as an individual, can be set up to automatically store those files in specific folders for me so that that happens automatically. And it might not seem like much, but just the ability to automate the attachments and the storing of attachments in a specific folder so they're easy for me to find um, saves me a lot of time um, in, t in terms of I nev never need to search Outlook again to try and find all those attachments, which is quite difficult to do if I've got hundreds of emails to search through. Um, and I can now find those easily in a, in a folder. So that's one example, but we'll talk about improving your productivity and time management skills really across flow. How can you automate a lot of these things um, that you're doing and offload that onto Office 365 to do for you? Okay. Otherwise, if there are no questions, thanks so much for for joining me today, really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in two weeks time. Great, thanks very much. Have a great day. Thanks, you too, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.